Hello guys, the first thing I would like you to do is have a go at this quick quiz. You don't need to write this down, just sort of say it out loud yourself, or if you want to write it down, you can. But I want you to look at the pictures of things that are on a shrine and the next slide and try and guess what is missing. So this is linking on to what you started learning from the last lesson. So give it a go. Here are the pictures. The answers to what is missing from a shrine will be at the end of the PowerPoint. So try not to cheat or just don't cheat. If you didn't remember that, guys, then I would suggest going it back over the shrine to make sure you are very confident on that. because it's, it's usually quite a big question when it does turn up in exams. Here is another quiz to go over what you learned last lesson to see how well you've taken in the content. So it says there, can you briefly explain the symbolic meaning for each of these parts of a shrine? So you would look at it and say, what does the statue mean? Why is it there? What does the water mean? And so on. So have a go at writing them down one to seven and then writing next to them what the meanings are. If you can't answer one, leave it blank. And then at the end of the PowerPoint, you were basically indicated to yourself what you need to go back over and revise. So in today's lesson, you're going to be looking at the purpose of worship. So we're going to be looking in more detail why this stuff that you started looking at last lesson is really important. So you can see the objectives. You can understand the different aspects of Buddhist worship, why it's important. And then you're going to debate which part you think is actually the most crucial in getting them towards their goal of enlightenment. Now, if you can't remember what enlightenment is, because this is a key word you looked at in the Buddhist beliefs topic, enlightenment is the state of mind when you realise the truth about the world, you are at complete peace and you are not attached to anything anymore. So this is what Buddhists are aiming for, is enlightened, to be an enlightened being. So this is what we're going to be studying in today's lesson. Okay, at this point in the lesson, you should have watched that YouTube clip and then had a go at answering those level questions. So I'm going to go through possible answers you could have put in those questions um, or to those questions just to help you guys out. There are obviously the pages on coming up from the textbook, but this is obviously what this video is for. So why is the statue of the Buddha used in meditation? A possible answer you could have put is it helps them to focus, gives them something literally to look at. Another possible answer is that it gives them inspiration. They'll look at the statue of the Buddha and they'll think he's achieved enlightenment. He is at the very goal of what they want to do. So they'll look and think, what did he do that I need to do? And they'll use it as a source of inspiration. So he's like a role model and that's why he's there. On top of that, so we'll go on to the next question. Why do Buddhists recite scripture and chant in their worship? So there's different answers you could have put in here. It helps them to remember the Buddhist teachings, helps them to possibly figure out what is he trying to say how can I follow that in my life so it helps them to remember and it helps them to think what do I need to do in order to progress in the religion and move on towards that goal of enlightenment this point we're going to move on to levels five and six question so it says explain how reciting mantras and chanting during puja helps buddhists on their way to enlightenment so puja is obviously worship so how do those reciting those things help them so I kind of answer this a little bit in questions four and five. It helps them because it makes them think, right, do I know what this teaching is saying? If I know what it's saying, how can I then do something about it in my life? So the mantras and the chants tell them what they need to do in order to get to enlightenment. So that's one way that it can help them is it gives them that insight on what they need to do. So it allows them to reflect on the teachings and then from that moment on, go on and change something in their life. So you can see that for a level five and six in your RE GCSE, what you need to do is not only just state what the things are for, but then explain in more detail how that affects them. So that's why it's a five and six question, because it's more development. For levels seven and nine, this requires you to make a judgment. You need to explain what your opinion is and then back it up with evidence. So it shows me you know the religious teachings and then you can make up something from that. So. If meditation helps the Buddhists understand the teachings of the Buddha in more detail, is there any need for physical written scripture? So if you were going to say, no, there is no need for scripture, you could have said things like, because the Buddhist has re repeated it in their heads, they know it, they don't need to have it physically written down. 
You could argue that writing it down as a scripture is a form of attachment because you depend on that scripture to go back to. So therefore, reciting things um, meditation itself as a practice is more important because it's something that you don't necessarily depend on. If you're going to argue that scripture is more important, you could argue that scripture contains everything the Buddha's ever said. It's the guidebook. It helps them to get to enlightenment. Without the scripture, somebody who's just, say, converted to Buddhism wouldn't have a clue what the religion's about. So it helps him to go back to it as a source of information. So therefore, scripture is more important. So they're the possible answers you could get in the level seven to nine, because obviously you're either going to agree or disagree. So it depends. There's lots of different things you could have put for that one, basically. These are just the textbook pages, guys, that would have helped you answer those questions before. So if you ever do need to look back, I'll leave these obviously on here. And there's not much more to say on this slide. And that is the first part of the lesson done. So we're understanding the different, different aspects of worship and the purpose of it. So we're looking at why they do what they do in that more detail. OK, so we're going to be able to explain that now. So we're going to learn more detail in the next part. OK, so at this part in the lesson, what you would have found or what you're going to find out if you're following along with this video is that I would like you to watch that video clip which explains an app called Headspace. Now Headspace is not a Buddhist app, it's not a religious app, it's an app that is designed to help people to relieve stress, to deal with anxieties and depressions. It's a really good app to use for anybody really who struggles with those kind of things and it contains lots of different meditation practices. So it just explains that app there for you guys because later on in the lesson I would like you, if you want to, obviously I never force you guys to do anything. If you would like to have a go at meditation, uh, that's coming up in the next part. The YouTube link in the corner of the screen will take you to a meditation called Beach Coma. Now, what it'll do is talk you through that meditation. It'll tell you to close your eyes, to focus on your breathing and so on. So that is a type of thing that you will find on the Headspace app. Now, like I've said previously, it's not strictly Buddhist, but it is a meditation. So if we were in class, I would have invited you to take part if you would like. Now, the reason I get you to do it, as I've explained in the little blue box there, is basically to give you an opportunity to feel what it's like to meditate. Usually people who take part in this say that they feel really relaxed. They feel if they were stressed or anything before, they feel completely unstressed and very, very calm, like I've said. Now, this is exactly what Buddhists try and do in meditation is calm the mind. So then they can go on to concentrate on the Buddhist teachings to find out what the Buddhist teachings are trying to say and how they can use those teachings to improve their lives. So by doing this activity, it gives you a real experience of why Buddhists do what they do. You should at this point have watched that video link there, which shows you real life footage of Buddhists meditating and so on. Then you should have had a go at answering these questions. So what I'm going to do is, like it says there, help you out with those questions if you were struggling. So the first little bit that I can see, it says, what are the differences between prayer and meditation? So prayer, usually it, it focuses on certain things. So asking for help. It could be saying thank you for something. It could be asking for guidance and so on. Usually you're talking to a God asking for some sort of help and guidance or intervention. Usually meditation, however, is where you self reflect on what you personally need to do in order to make a difference to your life. So you're not really sometimes you can be asking for help and guidance to a Buddha or a Bodhisattva. You can be doing that. But meditation particularly is about self improvement and helping yourself along the path to enlightenment to your goal whereas you could say in so we, we focus on christianity in our studies when a christian will pray they're having that conversation and relationship with their god meditation isn't necessarily about that relationship and with the, with the buddha it's more about taking what he did and improving your life okay so you might then been able to pick apart some of the answers for the next bit, which is what's the similarities between prayer and meditation. Sometimes in meditation, like I've said, Buddhists do ask for guidance. They do sometimes they believe communicate with with the Buddha and with other well, Bodhisattvas. So there is that aspect within which is similar between them, where they are sometimes asking for guidance and help, which is what they do in prayer as well. 
Another similarity you could argue is that it is part of their faith in developing themselves more religiously. So it connects them with their religious leaders um, and it helps them to basically feel a part of their religion in, in more detail. The very last question then says, what are the two purposes of meditation? Now, this is on the textbook slide um, on the next one, but in case you were struggling. So one of the purpose, the main purpose is a starting point, which is to calm your mind. You've got to calm your mind first and become less stressed and take away those feelings of suffering. So that's the key, one of the key purposes is to calm your mind. The second purpose then is once you've done that, you can learn more about the religion, more about the Buddhist teachings in more detail. So it's to develop your understanding. We're now going to move on to debate which parts you think in worship are the best at trying to get a Buddhist towards their goal of meditation. So what I would like you to do is explain your point of view. OK, so what do you think will help a Buddhist get closer in their journey to enlightenment? So is it meditation? Is it studying Buddhist texts in more detail? Is it chanting? Is it even a mantra which isn't on there? But you could argue that. Or is it by doing good things? Because Buddhists are all about doing good doing whatever they're doing to get good karma so is it that so i want you to think out of those things you could bring in mantras there if you would like what do you think is going to get them towards their goal of enlightenment the best okay so enlightenment again they've got the keyword box there to help you understand what that is so that's freedom from suffering and attachment so if you've put meditation certain answers you could have put in is that i believe meditation is the best because it helps a buddhist to calm the mind and focus on what they need to do in order to get to their goal so it gives them it empowers them more as a religious person because it gives them control of the mind and it gives them a clear sense of what they need to do to improve so that gets them to enlightenment you could argue studying texts because you could have said things like it includes everything the buddha did to get to enlightenment it teaches them what they need to know for them personally to get to enlightenment as well chanting if you've argued chanting you could say because it allows them to empower their mind because they learn more about the religion themselves because they're literally chanting it so they can remember it it helps calm the mind and gives them a deeper understanding of the buddha's teachings themselves so they become experts at what they need to do and therefore they can go and do it you could say charity work if you're arguing that one gets them towards the, the goal of enlightenment because it allows them to free suffering of other people. It gives them good karma, which will help them get towards enlightenment because they're becoming a better person. You could say as well that it helps them reflect on what they need to do to improve and therefore they're, they're living out the life that the Buddha would have wanted them to do. So that's up to you which one you think is the most important one. I've just given you a few ideas of things you could have put in that one. That is the end of this help video. So the main things you need to take away from this are the following. The purpose of worship. What is the purpose of any of the types of worship that they do? One is to calm their mind, because if you don't have a calm mind, you can't focus. So therefore, the second part is once you've calmed your mind is to develop your understanding of what you need to do personally to improve so that you can go and move forward to your goal of enlightenment. So you can actively do what needs to be done. So that is basically the, the simplest way of me explaining what the purpose of worship is, whether that's meditation, chanting, mantras, and we're going to learn more different types of worship later on. But the key purpose is, like I've said, to calm the mind, to develop that understanding so you can move on to gain enlightenment, which is the freedom of suffering. In the next few slides, which you'll just run through now, are the answers to the quizzes previously. So you don't need to hear from me from those bits. Just go and check your work, guys. OK, well done. And I'll see you guys later on in my other YouTube videos. Take care, guys.